Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we will be covering chapter 2.3, Formulae and Equations. By the end of this video, you should be able to write formula of ionic compounds, predict the ionic charge from the periodic table, give the name and formula of ions, and balance chemical equations. Before we start, you need to be aware of a few definitions. An element is a substance made up of one type of atom. Elements are found on the periodic table, such as sodium and oxygen. A compound is a substance containing more than one element. They are chemically combined with one another and are present in a fixed proportion, such as sodium chloride or magnesium oxide. Binary compounds contain two elements only. Molecules are a group of atoms covalently bonded together, such as a molecule of oxygen, a water molecule or a carbon dioxide molecule. An ion is a charged atom the atom must have lost or gained electrons, such as Na+, Cl-. Looking at the periodic table, we have the metals on the left, and on the right we have the non-metals. Metals always lose electrons in reactions, forming positive ions. Non-metals gain electrons, forming negative ions. Each column in a periodic table is called a group. The column the furthest to the left is group 1. The next column is group 2, and so on. We ignore the elements in yellow on the periodic table. These are the transition metals, and we'll talk about these later. Elements in group 1 have one electron in the outer shell. All elements like to have a full outer shell of electrons, so it makes sense to lose that outer shell electron and form a 1 plus ion. Elements in group 2 of the periodic table have two electrons in the outer shell. They like to lose both of them, forming a 2 plus charge. On the other hand, we have the non metals. If we take nitrogen, it's in group 5 of the periodic table. It needs eight electrons in its outer shell. Therefore, it needs to gain three electrons. We say it's got a three minus charge. Chlorine is in group seven of the periodic table. It needs to gain one electron and has a one minus charge. Metals in the middle of the periodic table, on the previous slide as yellow, were transition metals. They can form several different ions with different charges and don't fit into a specific group. Their charge is always shown in brackets using Roman numerals. For example, copper, I, means that copper forms one plus ions. Copper, two I, forms two plus ions, and so on. We also have polyatomic ions. These contain atoms of more than one element bonded together. It is an ion because it still has a charge. In the table, there are several polyatomic ions which you need to be aware of and they will be used throughout the A-level syllabus. You are expected to give these in exams. We learned previously that a compound is two substances chemically combined. An ionic compound contains a cation, which is a positive ion, and an anion, which is a negative ion. The overall charge of an ionic compound is zero, so the positive and the negative charges must balance. If we take the first example, lithium oxide, lithium has a 1 plus charge, oxygen has a 2 minus charge. We can find these on the periodic table. I like to cross over the charges, bringing the 2 from the oxygen underneath the lithium and the 1 from the lithium underneath the oxygen. This shows we need 2 lithiums for every 1 oxygen, so the compound is Li2 
O. Now let's take aluminium hydroxide. Aluminium has a 3 plus charge found on the periodic table. Hydroxide was one of the polyatomic ions. It's got a 1 minus charge. So we cross these down. This shows that we need one aluminium for every three hydroxides. And the compound is AlOH3. You may notice that the OH is in brackets. All polyatomic ions must be in brackets if there are more than one in the compound. Your turn. Write the formula for the following ionic compounds. Number one, sodium carbonate. It contains sodium one plus ions and carbonate two minus ions. Sodium can be found in the periodic table, whereas carbonate was one of the polyatomic ions. We cross these over, meaning we need two sodiums for every one carbonate, making the compound Na2CO3. Number two, magnesium phosphate. Magnesium can be found on the periodic table. It's got a 2 plus charge. Phosphate was a polyatomic ion with a 3 minus charge. We cross these over, making the compound Mg3PO4-2. Number 3. Ammonium chloride. Ammonium has a 1 plus charge. Chloride has a 1 minus charge. We cross these over making the compound NH4Cl. Lastly, we look at writing equations. A key fact before we start is that some elements exist as diatomic molecules. This means they travel around in pairs. The ones you should be aware of are hydrogen, nitrogen and oxygen, as well as all the halogens, those in group 7. So, fluorine, chlorine, bromine and iodine. The first example we have is magnesium plus water equals magnesium hydroxide plus hydrogen. They've given you the word equation and you have to write the symbol equation. Magnesium can be found in the periodic table. As a solid, it exists as Mg. Water is H2O a fact you should be aware of. Then we have magnesium hydroxide. This is an ionic compound, so we will have to balance the charges. Magnesium has a 2 plus charge. Hydroxide has a 1 minus charge. We cross these, meaning we need two hydroxides for every magnesium. So, Mg brackets OH brackets 2. And hydrogen is a diatomic molecule. So we write this as H2. We therefore have the equation Mg plus H2O goes to Mg brackets OH brackets 2 plus H2. Now we need to balance the atoms. I like to draw a little table. We can see on the left side of the equation we have one magnesium, two hydrogens and one oxygen. On the right hand side of the equation, we have one magnesium, four hydrogens and two oxygens. That's not balanced. We have two more hydrogens and an extra oxygen on the right. Therefore, we need to add a big two in front of the H2O on the left. If we do this, we should have the same number of atoms on each side. Your turn. Write balanced equations for the following reactions. Number one, oxygen plus hydrogen react to give steam. Firstly, we write out the symbols O2 plus H2 goes to H2O. 
oxygen and hydrogen exist as diatomic molecules. If we look at the right hand side of the equation, we've got one oxygen and on the left, we've got two. I therefore put a two in front of the H2O. But that gives us four hydrogens and on the left hand side, we only have two. Therefore, I put a two in front of the H2. This gives us two oxygens on each side and four hydrogens. Number two, magnesium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid react to give magnesium chloride and water. Number two, magnesium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid react to give magnesium chloride and water. Using the charges, we have to figure out magnesium hydroxide. This gives us Mg brackets OH brackets 2. Hydrochloric acid is something you should be aware of. It is wrote as HCl. We need to use the charges to figure out magnesium chloride, which gives us MgCl little 2. And water is wrote as H2O. On the left hand side, we have one chlorine. And on the right, we have two. I therefore put a big two in front of the HCl. But now, on the left hand side, we've got four hydrogens. And on the right hand side, we've only got two. I put a big two in front of the H2O. This gives us the same number of atoms on both sides. Thank you.